Let's place our color wheels into our sketchbook and take some notes. Now that we've finished our color wheels, we want to go ahead and add them into our sketchbooks. So we're going to go ahead and start by cutting them out. Something to keep in mind is that your color wheel might end up just slightly larger than the pages on your sketchbook, but it should still fit well within your pocket size sketchbook. If you have a regular size sketchbook, then you should have absolutely no problem with this. So once we get it cut out, then we're going to open up our sketchbook and set it in. It's going to, in this small sketchbook, have to cross the middle. So what we're going to do is mark where the center happens, and we're going to create a fold and cut it actually in half. You just want to make sure that the center part of it is landing on one side of the page. Once again, for those of you that are using regular size sketchbooks, you don't need to do this. So once we have it folded and we know where our mark is, we're going to go ahead and make a cut. Now you could just leave it folded if you wanted to, but if we actually cut where it's going to hit the fold of the book, it's going to help the sketchbook close in the future. So we'll line that up when we glue it. Now I don't have it on camera, but here, right before this, I went ahead and retraced all of the notes that I made on the color wheel as far as what colors they were in a Sharpie, so that they'd be a little bit darker. And now that it's cut, I want to take this little arrow that I made, and I'm going to write complementary colors on it, and I'm going to take a fastener and fasten that in the center of the color wheel. The cool thing about this is if I spin it, now it will show me which colors are exactly opposite on the color wheel. So anytime I'm looking for my complementary colors, I can find them easily. Just keep in mind that you'll want to keep it straight up and down while you have your sketchbook closed or else your little arrow will get bent. Alright, now it's time to go ahead and glue in the color wheel. So I'm going to take the side that I cut off and I'm going to glue that first. As usual, you want to make sure that you're using a scrap piece of paper or something and just spreading out the glue evenly. Uh, you don't want it clumped, you want it going all the way to the edges so that it goes down nicely. Sorry that this ended up a little bit off camera. And then this is really, really important. You definitely do not want to glue anywhere around where the fastener spins. So I drew a little circle around it to give a little reminder to myself and then I spread the glue out evenly and then lined it up to the other piece in my sketchbook. Make sure you press down firmly so that it adheres well and then we're going to take some notes. Now something to keep in mind when you're taking notes is that you want to take time to make them look as nice as possible. The more interesting you make the page look, the more frequently you'll look at it and the more you will learn and retain the information. So we're going to go ahead and start out with a title. I have went ahead and uh, included some of it in Spanish as well. And then after titling it, I want to add the primary colors. I'm going to leave some space after writing the words primary colors because I'm actually going to repeat the some paint there that shows what the primary colors are. And then I'm going to list secondary colors and tertiary colors. So once again, for each of those, leave some space because we are going to leave some blots of color that identify what those are. This is not just going to serve as something fun to look at or do, but we also want it to be something that we can refer back to. So if we're using our sketchbook at all to do any painting or anything, we've got all the information right there. We can always see what complements we have, what our primary colors are, and so on and so forth. So now you're going to see how close you can get to remixing those colors when you get to your secondary and tertiary colors. You're going to use your primaries to remix them again and try to match up with what you have on the color wheel. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and label my saturated colors and tints and shades. 
So right now I'm just drawing circles around the outlines of the saturated colors, those four blocks down that we tried to make as pure color as we possibly could. I'm going to leave the spaces in between white though, and then as I get into my shades, I'm going to fill in all of those. So that inner two circles, three circles, if you count the one that's underneath the very center there. I'm going to go ahead and outline all of the edges in black so that we know that that's where the shades hang out. And then we have that middle ring, which is the saturated color, and we have the outer ring, which are the tints. So now I'm going to label those. And after that, really, I'm going to start to just decorate the edges of everything, um, just so that it helps me to remember. So I used a stencil to decorate the sides of it, and then I went over it in colored pencil to extend the colors and then I also did the same for the saturated, the tints and shades. So basically, I just want to make it look nice. I want to make it look colorful, and I want to make it look like something that I'm going to come back to every time to use as a tool. Good luck!